Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft will reportedly meet Monday to discuss Bill's future and the disastrous 2023 season. And if Kraft read today's Boston Herald, two should have a lot to discuss. The Herald's Andrew Callahan and Doug Hyde talking to more than a dozen team sources to get the inside story how a broken Patriots offense sunk another season and perhaps the Belichick era. A lot of good anecdotes. Here are some of the highlights from that story. Bill Belichick wanted to keep Matt Patricia, but relented and hired Bill O'Brien. O'Brien wanted to clean house on his coaching staff, but was denied by Belichick. The quarterback room was described as quiet and uncomfortable with no healthy communication in there about trying to win games. Perhaps the most interesting offensive line coach Adrian Clem confronted Patriots director of player personnel Matt Groh in a loud exchange early in the season, apparently not happy with the talent on the offensive line. We also have some great quotes in this one. Let's uh, highlight those as well. Uh, this was messed up from the beginning. Nothing like I expected. Just a lot of bad bleep and bad coaching. This is where we begin our deep dive as we bring in our Patriots insider Phil Perry along with MMQB's Burt Freer. Guys, listen, I I'm going to let you guys say most here, but I'm just going to say this. If, if Robert Kraft reads this story, reads the Herald story from the beginning of the year and watches this season, and he still does not move on from Bill Belichick. You know what? You are in a column for me with John Henry now, not caring about your team, not caring about the future, and you should just sell and move on and call it a day. Well, I think there are two things like at work here. Number one, this is exactly why you can't let what's happened over the last month cloud it, right? Like Because I think the last month has been about guys playing hard and showing some pride and coaching, it doesn't really address the systemic issue. The systemic issue is how he staffed this place and how he's filled the roster. So that's, I mean, if you look at those things, those things have not been fixed over the last month. You know, and then you get to Robert Kraft's piece of this, which is he legacy shopping? And is he concerned because of the way the Brady thing played out, what could happen if Belichick goes somewhere else? And unfortunately for everybody here, that's a part of the equation. Look, like I, I, I almost don't blame Kraft, you know, Phil, because owners have less control over their legacies. It's less about winning and losing and more about optics. And we've seen that in the case of Jerry Jones after he won championships, the case of Eddie DeBartolo after he won championships. A lot of times there's just there's this gray area with owners when it comes to their legacy. And Kraft trying to get in the Hall of Fame could let that color his decision making. Here. The big picture takeaway to me is that the decision last offseason, two off seasons mm -hmm. ago, to make Pat, Matt Patricia the de facto offense coordinator and put Joe Judge in a key role offensively has, in fact, derailed Bill Belichick's tenure here. I think a lot of us looked at it at the time and said, well, just because it was a loss, it doesn't make that fireable. It doesn't. But it led to a domino effect that has, in my opinion, culminated in the offense looking in the way it's looked right now. Because I do believe Robert Kraft made it very clear to everyone that they were going to hire a real offensive coordinator last offseason. I believe Bill Belichick wanted Bill O'Brien. Understanding that those were the parameters, I believe Bill Belichick mm -hmm. wanted Bill O'Brien, knowing that he had to hire a new offensive coordinator. But it was, now looking back, it looks like a half measure. Because yep. if he's not allowed to bring in his full staff, as it's laid out in the story there, then how much success are you truly expecting? Now, that said, I, I do think Bill O'Brien was okay with the staff the way it was set up when he got here. So it's easy to look back in retrospect and say, well, he doesn't have his guys. But I wonder how Bill O'Brien, if we had talked to him in real time, in the moment, how we would have reacted to the staff, because I think he was okay with it. That's my belief. Well, speaking of the staff, that was a big part of the article. I think that stuck out to a lot of people. Here's what Callahan and Kide wrote about Bill O'Brien, writing, quote, some assistants came to believe O'Brien wanted to clean house and build his own offensive staff upon arriving in January. But Belichick denied him. Belichick allowed one hire, lying, who replaced ex-tight ends coach Nick Cayley. To onlookers, a clear hierarchy developed with O'Brien and his assistants. There was lying and assistant quarterbacks coach Evan Rothstein and then everyone else. The staff dynamic is completely bleaked, a team source said, because this stuck out to me for one big reason. You know, we've heard people who are, I think, hesitant to part ways with a six-time Super Bowl champion head coach and say, you know what, don't, okay, keep him as your head coach, but strip him of his personnel duties, strip him of his GM duties, bring in somebody else and have that person run the personnel. I have argued for a while, and I think this proves my point, that even if you bring in someone different, it is still Bill Belichick's show, Phil. And if he, it's a half measure. And I don't know that I trust him to not take another half measure with a new GM. Yeah, which I, I think is why you need a clean break. It's why you need a fresh start. It, I think it would be unrealistic 
to ask anyone who's been in football over the course of the last 25 years to come to New England and tell Bill Belichick how things need to be done? That's not realistic. It's not happening. And so if you want to make this change, you have to make it a full sweep, head coach and general manager, and start fresh there. But there's just way too many I, conflicts that could occur if you try to split the baby. It's funny because I keep bringing up this Andy Reid example, and you can actually draw a parallel in the way that Andy Reid's tenure in Philadelphia ended because he made Juan Castillo, who, he, who had been his offensive line coach, into his defensive coordinator, which wound up metastasizing into a much bigger problem. The other thing that happened with Reid, though, when he left Philadelphia was he decided on his own – I don't want to do personnel anymore. I don't want to be sitting in scouting meetings during the season. I want to just go coach. But that was his decision, and it was coming in another place. He went to Kansas City where he was starting fresh. He brings in John Dorsey from the outside. They had a relationship. They had a relationship prior. And, like, he was able to kind of start fresh in a new place. I'm with Phil on this. Like, I could see Bill doing it. I could see Bill just deciding, hey, I just want to coach. I think it's too complicated to do it here. Like, and I think that that's the thing is like another person, like Phil said, coming into this place and trying to tell Bill who to pick in the draft, who to sign in free agency. I who to probably, play, Bert. He's yeah. going to have to play these players. And so I think he, he can't pick them and then he has to put them on the field. Yeah, like, I could see this. Ha- I could see this working for Bill in Washington or in Carolina or somewhere else. But here, based on the history, I think it'd be a bridge too far. Do you think, you know, we look, obviously the offense was the biggest problem the last couple of years with this team. Is that, because especially this year, is that Bill Belichick, is, the, is he the main reason, or is Bill O'Brien at fault for some of what happened with the offense? No, I mean, the buck stops with Bill. I mean, the bottom line, I, look. Bill, like, Bill Belichick. But Bill Belichick, yeah. I mean, this is, this is his, so this is the, like the, the inability to develop a successor for Josh McDaniels, right? And then the unwillingness to go outside to find one when there were some options out there for you. And then to do something completely off the board. And I think that that problem spills over now into this year where now you've got to completely blow up the offensive staff and you bring in some different guys and you have weak links here and you have guys involved in a shotgun marriage where everybody's fighting for their job and you've got a quarterback who's got a crisis of confidence. Um, There's so much that went into this that are – it's just – it's beyond Bill O'Brien. And it's because Bill Belichick created all these holes, both in the roster and the staff. It goes back to decisions made well before Bill O'Brien got here. It's my understanding that when Bill Belichick was trying to figure out who was going to replace Josh McDaniels, he was openly telling people, hey, this is Mac Jones' second season. It's really important that we get this right. Mm -hmm. It's really important that we get the right person with some experience coordinating the offense. And they actually had an option there. People forget. Nick Cayley worked under Josh McDaniels for a long time. He's a tight ends coach now in L.A., Key part of what they're doing there. Instead, in a critical second season, they go with Matt Patricia. Well, meanwhile, O-line coach uh, Adrian Clem with plenty to be unhappy with. Here is a look at the Ford Big Board built for America, built Ford Proud. The Pats didn't do much to improve their O-line struggles from last season. They signed Riley Reef and Calvin Anderson, who barely played. They traded for Tyrone Wheatley Jr. and Vidarian Lowe. Ugh. And they drafted Jake Andrews, City So, and Antonio Maffi in the late rounds of the 2023 draft. And that may have led to this, the Herald writing, quote, a few staffers privately pointed fingers back at decision makers about the talent available. That is, save for Clem, who confronted director of player personnel Matt Groh early in the season in a loud exchange that reverberated through the organization. Clem, according to sources, didn't feel heard, while some offensive veterans didn't want to believe their eyes i don't know what he's complaining about they got three offensive linemen in the middle rounds but what is there to complain about i mean they went out they needed offensive linemen they got off riley reef calvin anderson i mean this part to me too just like i don't know i don't know if it's what happens when it's insubordination or what it is but this is it's like it's to me it's unheard of within this organization he's not the only one though i mean there are there are people oh i'm not blaming him i'm saying this is a construct of everything that was happening that it just all bubbles over no question. It, and everyone knew, understood what they needed in the draft. And they go defense, defense, defense. And there were multiple sets of eyes that mm-hmm. did what I'm doing right now. And their eyebrows shot to the roof because when you have such a glaring need and you don't and you choose not to address it and you buttress areas of your team that are already strengths in some cases, that's going to lead to some dissension, even if it's Bill Belichick who's making the final call on these players. This isn't a second guess. Like, I, I can distinctly remember sitting on this set in April and May and June and saying the tackle situation has a chance to be a five-alarm fire. The receiver situation 
wasn't quite that bad, but it was a problem. And the Patriots responded by throwing $20 bills at a million dollar problem. They go and get Trent Brown. Why is he available? Why, why is he still out there as talented as he is? We know why. Juju Smith-Schuster, they bring him in. Can he be your number one receiver? Like the Chiefs are walking away from him because of a knee problem. It's like they, they kept cutting corners, right? And I think they've always had the back. They, they've always had they've always had like the backstop of Dante Scarnecchio will figure it out. Tom Brady will figure it out. And they don't have that backstop anymore. And so now, like when you're again like taking chances on guys like that, and they're really important to you making it work and you don't have other people to band-aid the problem if it doesn't work, this is what you wind up getting, which is Juju Smith-Schuster ending the, the season on injured reserve, which was 100% predictable, and your starting left tackle, Trent Brown, you know, completely off the reservation, which also was predictable. And, and Riley Reef not being able right. to make it through the season. I mean, there are coaches who worked closely with Riley Reef recently who, who were surprised he was still in the league. Yeah. And the Patriots, it looked like, were planning on having him start at right tackle, and he couldn't even stay there through the early part of training camp. They tried him at guard instead. Bill Belichick had a telling quote, I thought earlier this week, that flew a little bit under the radar. When he was asked about the tackle position, he said, it's not how we expected it to go. But when you look at Riley Reef and Trent Brown and you're hoping Calvin Anderson can maybe be a starting tackle for you, nobody expected him to get sick. But he had never been a true wire-to-wire -wire starter at a critical position. Mm -hmm. When you take City So and you hope to make him a tackle when he'd played almost his entire collegiate career at guard, how did you not see this coming? Well, and that too, guys, as you guys are talking, I feel like this is the second year in a row where we have all second guessed decisions make whether well, made, whether it's coaches or personnel, and they have backfired and they haven't worked out. And that to me, again, should be the most glaring example hanging, to the crafts. It's hanging on to mistakes too. Like that's the other part. When they weren't their best, they didn't chase mistakes, right? So like they would cut their <laughs> losses with guys. The two draft picks in back-to-back -back years of Isaiah Wynn and Nikhil Harry, they never fix those. And if you look at good organizations, generally, they'll admit their mistakes quickly, like the Eagles, right? Back-to-back -back years, they draft uh, J.J. Arcega Whiteside and Jalen Rager. Did they hang on to those picks? Nope, picks? they get rid of them and they nope. move on. Nope, then they draft Devontae Smith the year after that, trade for A.J. Brown the year after that.